afternoon. Welcome to TNC Radio. Live. This is the Truckers Network Radio Show. And now here's your host, Shelly Johnson. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. Yes, this is the Truckers Network Radio Show on TNC Radio. Live, where we offer the news, weather, traffic, sports, entertainment, and important information our commercial drivers want and need. Backyard barbecues are going to be in full force this upcoming holiday weekend. Everybody enjoys those. Foodborne illness is something everyone needs to know about, though, along with ways to eat healthy over Memorial Day. Dr. Julie Gatza of the Florida Wellness Institute is here to remind us that if we're not careful, our much-anticipated backyard feast with family and friends could easily result in miserable memories of foodborne illness. Nobody wants that. I've had food poisoning in my lifetime, so I know what that's like. Dr. Julie is one of the nation's top chiropractic physicians with over 30 years of clinical practice, and her knowledge is amazing. So we decided to have her back on the show today. Hey, Julie, thank you so much for coming back on the show. Thanks, Shelly. I'm glad to be here. So what is it? I know people don't want to think about foodborne illness, but what is it people need to know about backyard barbecue food safety? I mean, you know, most people know some of these basics, but I do find that there are some um, blank spots in the education on this. And, you know, obviously you want to wash your hands before you cook food just so you don't, you know, contaminate with whatever it is that you've been digging in the garden or doing whatever. So, Mm -hmm. You know, it's just one of the major things that needs to happen. But one of the other things that um, people aren't always aware of is not to cross contaminate. So if you do, um, you know, cut up chicken, you want to cook, cut that up on a separate cutting board that's sort of just, you know, a a plastic one, not necessarily you don't want the wood. And, um, you know, keep the meat cutting board away from the vegetable cutting board. And that would also include, you know, cleaning the knives with soap and water in between and washing your hands in between. You know, a lot of people um, will take the chicken out on the baking sheet that's raw, put it on the grill and not clean the baking sheet. So they're putting that cooked chicken back on the raw Mm. chicken juice, Mm -hmm. which is also a big no-no because you don't want to get salmonella and, you know, things like that. And, you know, the food poisoning isn't quite as prevalent as it used to be because things are, you know, a little bit more aware. But, you know, it definitely can rock your world in the really worst way when you do have it. Oh, absolutely. And after you cook meat, how long can it safely be out before you put it in the fridge? That's a good question. I'm, you know, I would pretty much say if, if it's, you know, fully cooked, you're going to be fine for the day. It's not such a big deal. Um, okay. The meat isn't, it's the raw meat that you're, you know, more concerned about, you know, not cooked enough. But, you know, things like... Um, the mayonnaise and the eggs uh, in the macaroni and cheese and the potato salads, a lot of people, you know, associate with the mayonnaise. But the other thing that also can really mess people up is the onions. And the onions happen to absorb a lot of toxins. You can actually put Mm -hmm. an onion on your feet and under, you know, a a socks when you're Mm -hmm. sick and it will um, be sort of dark in color because it does pull toxins. So Mm -hmm. onions are one of those things also you don't want to have sit out um, marinating in all these other things for too long because they can mess you up as well. How long can you keep onions in the fridge? Because I I'd heard that uh, onions absorb toxins. They uh, do. I don't keep them in the fridge. What I do is if I don't use the onion, I cook it. Um, I'll use whatever I'm using for the cooking, and then I'll chop it up in small bits and put it in a bag for the freezer. And okay. then if I need an onion, I have chopped onion and I don't have to go through it again because I rarely use a full onion. But sitting it in the fridge, you're right, it's not, um, it's not good for you. Even in a Ziploc bag? Correct. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to be changing how I do things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, because I, I like fresh onions on my salad and so forth. And if I don't use the whole onion, I put it in a Ziploc bag and it doesn't stay there all that long, but... Wow. Right. I mean, you're probably going to be fine, but, you know, onions in general, they do absorb toxins. Mm-hmm. So, you know, are they taking that from the paper, paper plastic bag as well? I don't know. So I'm just pretty careful with them. I know I'm kind of digressing here on the onion road, but I have <laughs> actually heard of people putting onion next to their bed if they're sick. Yeah. And it helps right. them feel better. That's right. And it and the onion actually turns um, black. 
And so the more toxins it's absorbing, the darker it turns. And I've seen it happen. And, you know, people think it's crazy to put onions on your feet and then put them on a sock Mm -hmm. when you're sick. But same thing, it starts to draw toxins from the body. Wow. That's amazing. And and, and it's a cheap cheap alternative. I mean, onions, uh, knock on wood here, because everything's going up in price. Onions, um, in the scheme of things, are pretty inexpensive. Yes, I agree. (laughs) And they're really good to eat, for, you know, if you don't mind onions, not everybody can tolerate them. I love them. Right. But. Yeah, I love them too. Raw, they're kind of rough on you though. Um, raw onions in general play havoc on your digestive system. And one of the reasons that people burp onions and, and even mm-hmm. garlic um, is because they can't digest them. And so as much as I love onions, I avoid them like the plague raw because I just cannot digest them properly and they sit with me and I can get a bellyache within 30 minutes and I wish it wasn't true because I love the taste of them. Mm-hmm. So cooked is better, but you know, most people have um, inefficient digestion systems and you know, for various reasons. We all aren't making enough digestive enzymes to break down the food that we're eating and so even when we're eating healthy food, we're not getting the most nutrients from that because we aren't able to get those out without, you know, making the proper enzymes. I've been giving enzymes to my patients for years and years, high quality enzymes, because uh, it really helps them get the most bang for their buck every time they're eating. And if they're eating lousy food, you know, let's just say that they're on the road eating lousy food, you know who I mean. Mm -hmm. Um, you want to take enzymes to help break down that food because, okay, we're all inevitably going to be, you know, stopping off at the fast food places and there's not a lot of choices all the time, but you know, we don't have to then feel lousy 30 minutes afterwards. So I, I give something called absorbate and it really helps to break down the lousy food and the good food. And where do people find absorbate? I know you've talked about it before. It sounds like an amazing product. It, I love it so much. It's sort, it's my go-to forever. Um, there's a uh, website called naturessources.com, and um, they can look that up and get, get themselves educated on what it is and why it's so valuable, or they can call a 1-800 number, um, 1-800-827-7656, mm-hmm. and if they use the code radio, they can ask for some free samples, or they can get 20% off their first order. So it's kind of a no-brainer. And, uh, you know, there's multivitamins out there. There's all sorts of other solutions, but I always think it's best to get what we need from our food first. And that's what this helps you do. Absolutely. So in terms of like burgers on the grill, if you're going to have onions on it, I mean, I like my raw onion, onion, cheese, uh, Miracle Whip. I don't use mayonnaise simply because I think that's a little bit more iffy especially if you're outside and so forth you have to be real careful of the temperature with that well you do with miracle whip too but um would it be better to saute the onions if somebody's got digestive issues and absolutely okay yeah and you don't have to do a bunch just breaking it down a little helps and uh you know sometimes even putting it on the burger and taking it off the burger if you're really sensitive like i am um i still have the onion flavor without eating the onion Mm. Oh, I love onion so, you flavor. Know, I, I love it so much. It's just, it's, you know, but it definitely gets me. And so I have to be very careful about that. And I've heard a lot of people have the same thing. Now, in terms of cooking to the right temperature, when you're at a grill, I'm not sure everybody has their food thermometers. How do they know if something is safe to eat? You know, I, I mean, experienced grillers just know. <laughs> so mm-hmm. There's probably more of those than, you know, we even think, but you know, it's, if you don't know, you really should just invest in a ten dollar thermometer, and then you'll be safe. But any time that you're cooking a burger, you know you can eat raw hamburger. It's not going to kill you in general. So you know people eat steak tartare and you know different raw red meats. Anyhow, um, it's the chicken that you really want to be careful. So you know if you cut the chicken and it's cooked through and not pink, you're fine. And you know I would say the chicken is the one that you want to, and chicken and turkey are the ones that you want to put the most attention on because. Um, and and pork chops if you're doing that. So, you know, cut it through, see what it looks like. That's generally what happens. And, you know, you can even look it up on the Internet, you know, how thick is it, how many minutes on each side, what temperature, and you'll get close to normal as well. I've heard people say, oh, pork chops or, or pork, it's not as big a deal as it used to be. That's and, right. Is is that true? Yeah. Okay. It is. It's the trichinomus, and they really sort right. of handled that. And um, so it's not as dangerous as it was when I was a kid. Okay. Now, if you buy organic meat, 
um, is that more susceptible to bacteria because antibiotics are not used or? Nope. Okay. It's not. Yeah, it's the same. So, you know, it's probably, it just means it hasn't been um, uh, killed with all the other pesticides and things like that. So, um, no, but it makes no difference. You know, you still just have to respect, especially of the poultry. And, uh, you know, everything else is pretty, you know, if you want to eat raw fish, we do it all the time, yeah. eating sushi and, you know. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> So with that, you know, nothing else is that sort of sensitive as the poultry. Sure. Raw fish, um, there's some friends of mine who like sushi. And it, it's really pretty on the plate, but it's just never been something that I've ever really wanted to partake in. It's like, yeah, I've heard too many bad things. And But have you tried it? No. Uh-oh. All right. <laughs> there you go. It's delicious. Is it, I is crave it. it. Is it's it better so than... Okay, but what about worms and stuff? Can people get that off of raw fish? You know, here's I, my thought is this. We are an organism that knows how to fight things off. And, uh-huh. you know, we have immune systems, at least before two years ago, that we're doing that all the time. And uh, there are so many parasite cleans, cleanses and all these different things. And my first thought is, let's get the digestive system working properly. Let's get in something like the absorbate. Let's change up some of the bad habits. Let's clean up the alley. And mm-hmm. once the alley is clean, you aren't going to have all the little rodents and things infesting the area. So, but, you know, if somebody's trying to clean up their gut and, and you know, get rid of all sorts of stuff, unless it's something that's really obvious that they have, um, it's always, let's fix the real diet first. Let's get the digestion working properly. And um, then anything you do to handle the rest is quite easy and uh, very successful. Makes sense to me. Absolutely. You got to have the septic tank working properly. That's, that's exactly right. <laughs> We have to go to break here, Dr. Julie. I know you've got a lot more great information on uh, how to eat safely and better uh, for the backyard barbecues, especially this upcoming weekend. You're listening to the Truckers Network radio show here on TNC Radio. Live. I'm Shelly Johnson. I'm talking with Dr. Julie Gatza of the Florida Wellness Institute. Definitely stay tuned for more great information coming. This blog on TNC Radio is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. The five best truck stops in America. Truck drivers spend days, sometimes weeks, out on the road. Sometimes taking a break at a nice truck stop is a great way to relax and take your mind off driving. There are many truck stops across the United States, but we listed the five best truck stops that every trucker needs to stop and experience. Little America, Little America, Wyoming. The Little America Truck Stop is located in Little America, Wyoming. It's a mini-chain truck stop with several locations throughout the country for truckers to enjoy. Little America offers a wide variety of services to truck drivers. Some of the services include service truck roadside repair, tire repair, new tires, wheel seals, oil changes, water pumps, brakes, courtesy property shuttle, AC repairs, belts, DOT inspections, and trailer tarp installation. Iowa 80, Walcott, Iowa. Iowa 80 is a place where truckers want to stop. It's the world's largest truck stop, and it's filled with tons of activities and tourist attractions. Truck drivers could stop and enjoy a nice meal, watch a movie, or stop by the trucking museum. Iowa 80 also has a full range of truck services and amenities. Some of the services and amenities include Catscale, Chiropractor, Convenience Store, Interstate Dental, Dogamat, Fuel Center, Laundry Facility, Library, Travel Service Center, truck mat and a Workout Room. South of the Border, Hammer, South Carolina. Pedro's Truck Stop, also known as Porky's, located in Hammer, South Carolina, is a world-famous roadside attraction for tourists and truck drivers. Pedro's filled with many different activities, unique foods and shopping. It also offers truck drivers supplies, showers, a trucker's lounge, and 24-7 fresh hot coffee. Trails Travel Center, Albert Lee, Minnesota. Trails Travel Center is everything a truck driver needs and amazing food. Some of the Trails Travel Center's food options are a tavern, Cold Stone Creamery, Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, and McDonald's. Truckers can also stop and shop heavy-duty truck parts or chrome parts. Trails Travel Center also has a truck service that offers drivers wash services, tire services, wheel alignments, and suspension repair. Jubitz, Portland, Oregon. 
Jubitz is a family-owned truck stop and boasts of being the world's classiest truck stop. They were also recently named the second best rest stop in America. Drivers can enjoy a 24-hour full-service Cascade Grill restaurant, a 100-room hotel, movie theater, barber shop, and more. Jubitz also has a truck service center and is committed to providing truck drivers the best tires, truck maintenance, and truck repair. Some of their services include engine diagnostics, oil change, DOT inspection, glass replacement, metal fabrication, welding, tires, tire service, and airbags. Plus, brake service, truck trailer alignment, shock absorbers, air conditioning maintenance, electrical diagnostics, battery service, suspension repair, electronic logging devices, lubricant service, APU installation, and service. This info blog was brought to you by The Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. What do you know about trains? Whether you're an expert or just want to learn something about the world of the railroad, join Bill and Jim Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central on TNCRadio.live. Welcome back to the Truckers Network Radio Show here on TNC Radio Live. I'm Shelley Johnson. I'm talking with Dr. Julie Gatza of the Florida Wellness Institute. We're discussing food safety and backyard barbecues and things people might not be thinking about. Um, I'm looking here, Julie, and you have um, a tip that says regularly consume pro- probiotics and fermented vegetables. Um, does that help protect a person in a backyard barbecue if they encounter a bad bacteria? It actually can. Uh, You know, some of the things that are on a plate, especially with our ethnicities, have been um, put there because it was aiding digestion. It was aiding and helping somebody break down the meal that was, you know, served um, from, you know, working in the farm or the fields or whatever. So, you know, you've got the sauerkraut, um, from the Germans, you've got ginger. When you're eating sushi, you have uh, coleslaw and pickles and uh, different things that will, are fermented. So they really do aid in your digestive system and, and making that gut healthy and you know able to do what it's supposed to do. Parsley on the side of the plate. Um, uh, pineapple that goes with ham helps you to break down the proteins, um, uh, the actual protein in the ham. And then you've got like uh, hot peppers that, um, increased circulation for digestion, so that also improves. Um, then you've got, you know, things like um, oil of oregano. So when people put oregano on food, it actually is an antimicrobial, anti-viral, um, uh, and antitoxin um, thing. So there's a lot of different spices that weren't just for taste; they were also to aid in, you know, making sure that people weren't sickly and and you know having digestive upsets every time that they ate. Interesting. Now, probiotics, we hear a lot about that. What's a good source of a good best, probiotic? You know, the one that I love is when I talked about the absorbate, they have uh-huh. an absorbate platinum, and the platinum actually has uh, probiotics in it. And, uh, you know, we have um, good bacteria and, and things that should be living in our gut that aid us. And uh-huh. if you've ever been on a course of antibiotics, uh-huh. um, it doesn't just kill the bacteria that you were trying to handle, like the ear infection or your chest congestion. Um, It's also wiping out all your good bacteria. So when you um, take something like the absorbate platinum, you're recolonating, you're re uh, you know, establishing good bacteria back into the gut so that it can actually work at a, at a better level. But you know, there's a lot of problems that go along with um, antibiotic use and stressful, you know, lifestyle or, you know, a lot of, drinking or bad eating over a period of time, it really can affect people and they're not quite associating that it's a digestion that's actually causing some of the fatigue or the skin problems or, you know, the weight gain. And, and so that's, you know, sort of not talked about enough because people are, um, aren't always doing what they need to. And it's very simple to just get it back into normal. So when people drink too much beer and they have what people call the beer gut, that could be because of <laughs> probiotic lack it, of? <laughs> very much so. Okay. And then once the liver isn't getting the nutrients that it needs, now the liver can't detoxify properly. So they do get that, you know, pregnant belly that goes along with uh, the beer drinking. And, you know, when you get them on, you know, a better diet, more protein, more vegetables, taking the uh, digestive enzymes like the absorbed or the absorbate platinum, you can see changes within such a short period of time that, 
you know, all they have to do is follow it for a couple of weeks and they're like, all right, you're right. Like that's going away. It's not just all muscle under here. <laughs> like, mm-hmm, well, mm-hmm. that's true. Okay. <laughs> now I've seen the term prebiotic. What is that? You know, I, I've seen it too. And I ha- don't know. <laughs> Let me just okay. tell you that because they come up with different things that mean different, I, I think to sell it somehow oh, or to yeah. talk about it. Like they never used to use the word gut biome. And, uh, right. I was like, I heard it on a show once and I was like, Oh my goodness, I have to look this up. What are they talking about? Well, they, you know, coined a word for how things work in the digestive system. So prebiotics, I just don't know. Okay. So probiotics is, pro- that's probably what you need. Um, and yeah, gut biome instead of microbiome, they, they just kind of shorten it up. Uh, so people can right. understand it, but it, uh, isn't necessarily technically correct. And it could yeah. Confusing. And you know, even microbiome, we, we didn't have that, um, that word in school and that was 31 oh. years ago. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. It's, it's a new word that's come up in, you know, something else that um interesting is GERD, um, G E R D for mm-hmm. gastroesophageal reflux disease. Mm-hmm. I remember being a doctor and somebody says, I have GERDs. And I was like, huh, what's GERD? No, it was a new term coined for I have um, acid reflux or I have acid indigestion. I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. So now it's a household word, but, you know, it wasn't in the books when I went to school. What is acid reflux cause? Acid by? reflux is basically when you eat food that you are digesting. Mm-hmm. And so uh, you're not making enough digestive enzymes. And um, so the food... Um, that's supposed to be in the stomach goes back up into the esophagus, into the esophagus, and mm-hmm. it starts to um, basically be reflux up into you. So you can have the acid reflux, and what happens is having that um, semi-digested food really irritates the mucosal lining of the esophagus. Oh, <laughs> esophagus, and it um, uh, puts people at risk for cancer mm-hmm. because um, mm-hmm. they're taking the different. Um, anti-acids and things like that, but they're not fixing the problem. So it's not going to um, save them from the long-term effects of it. So, you know, anytime somebody's having acid reflux, acid indigestion, they just need to actually locate what the heck it is that's causing it. Is it lack of enzymes? Is it some specific food they're eating? Uh, Could it be that, you know, they have other things going on that need need to be addressed, but it's not um, normal. It's just really common and it's definitely something to, uh, to pursue and find out why. Sure. Probably helps too, to thoroughly chew your food. I, I've seen some people just, you know, really chow down their food at at a record in record time. That can't be good for the stomach and. It's not because you're basically asking your enzymes to now do a heck of a lot more work than um, what should have been done just in the, the basic mechanics at the mouth. And so, you know, I've joked around over the years, chew your food 22 times, I just made up the number. But the fact is, it does allow you to actually sit and go, wow, I'm swallowing after seven chews. Boy, oh boy. And mm-hmm. you really do slow down your, um, your eating. Yeah. You actually get fuller faster. Mm-hmm. Um, you lose weight when you chew your food better. And the other thing, it really helps digestively because you are making enzymes with the saliva as well that also aid in breaking down the food. So, you know, just slow it down, start counting. You don't have to do it forever, but just notice that you have gotten probably into the habit of um, eating too fast and uh, mm-hmm. and uh, swallowing too big of pieces. Yes, I, that was something that my mother pounded into my head. Slow down, chew your food, masticate thoroughly. It was one of her phrases. <laughs> it's perfect and true. Uh-huh. <laughs> And of course, I remember I was probably the only child in elementary school that knew what that word meant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, That's funny. Um, I'm also seeing something here that says germ proof your recipes by adding antimicrobial spices. What's that about? I mean, it is back to, you know, um, using things like oil of oregano. You know, peppermint is extremely helpful for. Um, uh, your digestion as well, and parsley, and you know, there's a lot of things that um, you had no idea have you know wonderful properties as far as um, helping you digest your food. I mean, a bay leaf that you'd buy in a jar is actually helpful to keeping away bugs in the pantry. So I had oh, a bay really? leaf tree here, yeah, and I was just cut off branches and put it in my um, pantry, and it I, I really had no bug problems down here. We have a lot of them just wow. here in Florida. 
I may so, carry them. I've, I've been having issues with moths <laughs> here and there. Oh, yes. Lavender. Lavender's good for that? Okay. Yep. Yeah, you can get lavender and hang it in your closet. And um, you could either buy it fresh and, you know, crush it yourself or um, find a really good reputable oil company that makes the lavender without adding anything else. And um, it helps to keep the moths away. Interesting. Well, I'm going to definitely try that. I appreciate that. <laughs> sure. Now, the antimicrobial um, foods um, or spices, what would be good for a backyard barbecue that uh, can maybe give us a little bit more fighting power if there's some foodborne pathogens? I mean, you know, it, one, it's it, the oil of oregano is, I mean, any type of oregano that you're using with the food. So if you want to, you know, design a salad dressing around that, a Greek salad, something like that, you're mm-hmm. going to do yourself a huge um, favor on that. And anytime you're also acidifying um, the food while you're eating it also improves that too. So, you know, putting lemon in your water and things like that. And the one thing that I always tell patients, um, along with, you know, taking the absorbate if you're, you know, acid reflex or whatever digestive uh, complaints that you might have from a stomach ache to, you know, bloating or gassy or, you know, feeling, well, oh, my goodness, I just got to unbutton my pants, I'm uncomfortable. Well, taking that digestive enzyme helps with that. But um, it, if you ever had, um, let's say you do get food poisoning, taking um, the absorbate aids tremendously in getting rid of the toxins in the gut. Oh, wow. And everyone should always have activated charcoal on hand. You can go to your drugstore and go buy it in the regular vitamin areas, and you can break up one of those um, pills that they're in or just take it normally, and it absorbs the toxins. So, good you know, to it's know. always good to have it because if you don't have it, you wish you did when mm. you're experiencing that and you're not able to leave the house. I had food poisoning in college, and mm. uh, I, I ended up in the ER. Um, it was bad, and it was uh, yeah. some, some food they had on campus that was probably kicking around a little too long. <laughs> yep. And I remember I wasn't myself for at least a week. It was I, I, just awful. Yes, I had the exact same experience in chiropractic school. I worked at the theater, and it went around, and boy, did I get it, and I was as sick as a dog, and you're right. You, I, I mean, you know, I didn't go to the hospital, but I sure felt like I wanted to. Well, they had to put me on an IV to uh, hydrate me, and they had to put me on mm-hmm. composine because I couldn't keep anything down, and it, it was <laughs> it was bad. Mm-hmm. Oh, I goodness. was convinced after that my mother wasn't crazy when she said food poisoning is not a good thing. <laughs> no, it is not a good thing. <laughs> and if anyone's ever traveled out of the country and you know eaten the salads or drank the water, they have their own you know sordid story on uh, you know yep. <laughs> Montezuma's revenge. Um, I had that happen in Mexico. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, and I was careful not to drink the water, but I, I made the mistake of eating, um, I think it was some cabbage, some raw cabbage, uh, just yep. tasting it. Oh, yeah. It was amazing. <laughs> I know, it really is. Uh, <laughs> you definitely have to keep your wits about you. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, I learned my lesson there, too. So <laughs> <laughs> we have to go to break here, Dr. Julie. I know you've got some more terrific information for people uh, with our holiday coming up here with Backyard Barbecues. You're listening to the Truckers Network radio show here on TNC Radio. Live. We're talking with Dr. Julie Gatza of the Florida Wellness Institute. Stay tuned for more great information coming. This blog on TNC Radio is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. The five best truck stops in America. Truck drivers spend days, sometimes weeks, out on the road. Sometimes taking a break at a nice truck stop is a great way to relax and take your mind off driving. There are many truck stops across the United States, but we listed the five best truck stops that every trucker needs to stop and experience. Little America, Little America, Wyoming. The Little America Truck Stop is located in Little America, Wyoming. It's a mini-chain truck stop with several locations throughout the country for truckers to enjoy. Little America offers a wide variety of services to truck drivers. Some of the services include service truck roadside repair, tire repair, new tires, wheel seals, oil changes, water pumps, brakes, courtesy property shuttle, AC repairs, belts, DOT inspections, and trailer tarp installation. Iowa 80, Walcott, Iowa. 
Iowa 80 is a place where truckers want to stop. It's the world's largest truck stop, and it's filled with tons of activities and tourist attractions. Truck drivers can stop and enjoy a nice meal, watch a movie, or stop by the trucking museum. Iowa 80 also has a full range of truck services and amenities. Some of the services and amenities include cat scale, chiropractor, convenience store, interstate dental, dog mat fuel center, laundry facility, library, travel service center, truck mat and a workout room. South of the border, Hammer, South Carolina. Pedro's Truck Stop, also known as Porky's, located in Hammer, South Carolina, is a world-famous roadside attraction for tourists and truck drivers. Pedro's filled with many different activities, unique foods and shopping. It also offers truck drivers supplies, showers, a trucker's lounge, and 24-7 fresh hot coffee. Trails Travel Center, Albert Lee, Minnesota. Trails Travel Center is everything a truck driver needs and amazing food. Some of the Trails Travel Center's food options are a tavern, Cold Stone Creamery, Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, and McDonald's. Truckers can also stop and shop heavy-duty truck parts or chrome parts. Trails Travel Center also has a truck service that offers drivers wash services, tire services, wheel alignments, and suspension repair. Jubits, Portland, Oregon. Jubitz is a family-owned truck stop and boasts of being the world's classiest truck stop. They were also recently named the second-best rest stop in America. Drivers can enjoy a 24-hour full-service Cascade Grill restaurant, a 100-room hotel, movie theater, barber shop, and more. Jubitz also has a truck service center and is committed to providing truck drivers the best tires, truck maintenance, and truck repair. Some of their services include engine diagnostics, oil change, DOT inspection, glass replacement, metal fabrication, welding, tires, tire service, and airbags, plus brake service, truck trailer alignment, shock absorbers, air conditioning maintenance, electrical diagnostics, battery service, suspension repair, electronic logging devices, lubricant service, APU installation, and service. This info blog was brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Hello, everybody. This is Todd Dewey from the hit show Ice Road Truckers on the History Channel. And my source of radio and all truckers news, I go to tncradio.live. Welcome back to the Truckers Network radio show here on tncradio.live. I'm Shelly Johnson, and I'm talking with Dr. Julie Gatza of the Florida Wellness Institute. We've been talking about food safety, barbecues, the things to do and what not to do. Uh, Dr. Julie, what foods should a person eat if they've encountered food poisoning? God forbid that happens, but it can happen. Um, Well, one, they want to get some water in because if they have food poisoning, they're probably throwing up or have diarrhea and they're going to be uh, dehydrated quickly. So they want to get some, you know, the water in. Um, having a digestive enzyme to help break down whatever the heck is in there is also um, very, very important. So, you know, I use the absorb aid, which I love and does the trick for breaking down all food, including the toxins. Mm-hmm. The cool thing about the absorb aid is um, if you take it on an empty stomach, it also breaks down the inflammation, bacteria, viruses, as well as the toxins. So you can take it at night. And if you have joint pain, um, it helps with your joint pain because it helps to, um, uh, actually hone in on the inflammatory areas that you might have that, whether it's your hands or your knees or your back or your neck or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, activated charcoal is imperative to have in your house because that will absorb toxins. In college, we used to take it before we'd go out drinking because oh, it would really? absorb up the, yeah, it would absorb the toxins from, you know, the beer that we consumed. Now you do have very black tarry stools the next day, because it is charcoal, but uh, you didn't get quite so um, inebriated or feel so bad with hangovers. So we learned our lesson on that one too. But keep in mind, we are also chiropractors. So we had a little leg up on some of the knowledge that not everyone else did. I think I, what I used in college was like Tylenol and B-complex. Yeah, um, the B, B vitamins are super important. B1 really helps because you use up a lot of B1 when you've been drinking. So mm-hmm. uh, taking a load of that before you go to bed helps too. Tylenol, not so much uh, with alcohol in the liver. <laughs> probably. Well, that was more the after effect. You, know, uh-huh. you had to wake up and then decide if you're going to take it or not. <laughs> of course, those are the days that I used to take no dose and stuff like that, you know, so I could stay up and study. <laughs> Yeah, I did that once, never did it again. It was a complete mistake. 
But, you, you know, probably, even things, oh, go ahead. You probably ate better, too. Um, my priorities, you know, pot pies, uh, ramen noodles. <laughs> you know, <yeah. laughs> well, you were typical. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, you know, the other thing you're asking, um, peppermint is very helpful in um, aiding with digestion as well. So, you know, whether it's on the side of the plate or, you know, in a spring roll or even in a tea or, you know, as a garnish somewhere, um, the peppermint leaf is um, wonderful uh, to help with people digesting their food better. I've heard that peppermint is really good for you. Um, I know that it keeps critters out of your garden. (laughs) That's right. Uh (laughs) It does. (laughs) I was um, raising tortoises for a long time, and there was one tortoise that kept getting chewed on by a rat, of all things, on a shell. And so I used to have to go out there, and I'd put um, pure peppermint oil on the shell to um, keep the rat away from him. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, so I know, strange little facts, but it did work. We were talking about food poisoning. Um, I'm not sure everybody knows what that feels like. Uh, once you've had it, you never forget it. But what are the usual symptoms? Uh, usual symptoms is first a bellyache. And um, after that, you can get uh, uh, really burpy, gassy. You can throw up and have diarrhea at the same time. And you're basically you know, sweating it out. And, uh, you know, until all the toxins are out of the body, um, you can be, you know, really having a hard time even throwing up nothing in your belly. So it can be a... Uh, yeah. You know, quite devastating because once you get that into the bloodstream and now it's into your system, now you're fatigued, you're exhausted, you know, you don't want to put anything in the belly the next day. So mm-hmm. it can it take a huge toll on you. And if you're, you know, not a healthy person that gets it, this is where you, you know, can really be in some problems because your body can't take that extra type of stress because it's stressful on a healthy person. Oh, man, I remember when I had it, it was a good eight hours and they finally... Yeah. Uh, the RA in the dorm finally drove me to the, the hospital because the, the, the college didn't have a med center open over the weekend. Uh-huh. And I was um, throwing up and I was in massive pain. It was either or and it was constant and I couldn't keep anything down and I was thirsty. And it, um, it, it was, uh, I'm sure, <laughs> dangerous. And probably eight hours of that probably wasn't a good thing. Yeah, no. <laughs> Yeah, and with no warning, that's the other thing. <laughs> yeah, and of course, I remember that I had been drinking the night before, so I wasn't sure if it was from the alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it probably didn't help the situation. <laughs> yeah, but but food poisoning is a whole different, it's a whole different thing because usually with alcohol, you're just throwing up and you're done. Food right. poisoning does not give up. No, no. And I remember I was just exhausted. You know, yeah. here I'm 18 years old, and you, you snap back pretty fast at that age. But I, for a week, uh, I was just in not in good shape. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's where you start eating, you know, soup broths and, you know, smoothies and things that are just easy to digest and, you know, nothing, uh, you know, of any substance that has to, you know, work too hard. So you want things that are kind of pre-digested that's going into your system so that you can still get nutrition and yet not ask it to do too much. Sure. So are there foods in a backyard barbecue that are probably better for us? Um, are there any that are kind of like, eh, you hear the debate on hot dogs now, um, and that goes with the barbecue. <laughs> it does. I mean, hot dogs are sort of, you know, the joke of the meat because what the heck is in them? And, yeah. you know, it, everyone has their favorite type of hot dog and you know, unless you're eating it, you know, all the time and feeding it to your kids all the time, you know, go ahead and enjoy your hot dogs. It's not a big deal. Um, just, you know, do it in moderation like you would chocolate cake. Um, as far as, you know, what's really good at a barbecue is it's always the protein. So whenever you're at the barbecue, head straight for the grill and, you know, don't stop it. Go. That's it. Just go straight for the grill and have the, the chicken, the fish, the you know, the steaks, you know, the salmon, whatever the heck it is that they're cooking, because that's the one protein that um, is what your cells need the most and what we're usually missing, you know, the most in our diets is, you know, adequate amounts of protein. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you want to eat that first and then, you know, head for any type of vegetables, whether they've just been cooked on the grill or they're raw or it's in a salad form, 
Um, now you've put in the protein, you've put in the vegetables, you've put in the fiber, you've put in things that the body needs the most. Mm -hmm. Take your time, then head over for the carbohydrates, then head for the macaroni and cheese and the potato salad because, you know, those things are just fillers. There's not a heck of a lot of food value that you want to, you know, have a two-year-old exist upon. So, you know, eat those, but, you know, fill yourself up first with the protein and the vegetables. And, you know, as far as dessert goes, uh, everyone wants to pile dessert right in on the rest of the food that they just ate. I always say, you know, get to the party and put a napkin over the piece of pie. You know, put your name on it. Take your time so that you don't feel like you're compelled to go fight everyone else for the desserts that look so good. And you can actually digest your food a bit, take some absorbate, you know, give it some aid, and uh, and then enjoy your desserts. And, you know, if you can always go for a fruit one over the cake, you know, type ones, you're going to feel better anyhow. Sure. Well, I think that everybody probably really likes their burger and they're going to say, well, gee, I've got everything on my burger. I don't need to go for anything else. And, you know, I've got all of the food groups here, right? <laughs> I mean, it's true. And I certainly don't want to ruin anyone's burger experience for them as far as that goes. But, you know, if it is separate, like the chicken and the steak and the fish, you mm -hmm. know, those aren't usually put on the bread. So, you know, right. head for those first. But, you know, it's like trying to separate pizza and pastas and all the different things that are in there. It's just, you know, it's just, it does ask a lot of your digestion when you put all those foods in at the same time and you don't separate them. Your body is digesting or making enzymes and it says, ah, protein, we'll make the protein enzyme. And then at the same time it says, wait, but now we also have tomatoes coming in and we have potato chips coming in. And, and so you put all this food in at the gut and then it just don't, you just don't get the nutrition you could from separating it a bit, giving it a bit of time in between, and um, you're just not absorbing those nutrients. So you have more, you know, toxic load that irritates and inflames the guts. And this is where people are like, you know, I'm just pretty gassy or, you know, I burp a lot or I'm just so full and bloated. And, you know, none of those are normal. I mean it. They just are very common. So everyone is, you know, stressing digestion at some level. Mm -hmm. And so everyone's experiencing the same sort of, you know, symptoms. I've always said that you know, if you never, ever think of your digestive system, then it's working properly. But, you know, when you have any attention on it, then it certainly means it's giving you a flag that says, hey, something's wrong, let's get this handled. So when the body's working properly, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. and uh... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, how often uh, do you think about your heart? However, true. if yeah. it's not working properly, you have your mind on that all the time. So, sure. you know, digestion is the same as far as that goes. Makes sense. So focus on one type of food first and then just work your way around. Um, that's right. Which most people don't do, but this this is really important information. And that's why we love having you on the show. We do have to go to break here. You're listening to the Truckers Network radio show here on TNC Radio Live. I'm Shelley Johnson, and I'm talking with Dr. Julie Gatza of the Florida Wellness Institute. She has some terrific information. Stay tuned for more coming up in the next couple of minutes. Driving 11 hours a day, seven days a week can be emotionally and physically exhausting. Sleep is a very important part of a long haul truck driver's life. Being well rested and alert makes driving a lot safer for both the trucker and other drivers on the road. Getting enough sleep may sound easier than it seems. Living on the road makes it difficult to get the recommended eight hours of sleep. In fact, it's common for truckers to not get eight hours of sleep due to the 11-hour work shift. To help, we've put together five tips to help truckers stay awake while driving. Take vitamins. One way truckers can stay awake while driving is by taking vitamins. Not only are vitamins good energy boosters, they have tons of other health benefits too. Vitamin B helps with fatigue, depression, mood boosting, and muscle weakness. Consider adding vitamins to your morning routine. Eat healthy. An unhealthy diet has a huge impact on one's overall health. Dr. Jennifer Satchek says, Our bodies rely on the energy and nutrients we get from food. So what you eat, and how and when you eat it, can either drain you or sustain you. It might be more convenient to stop at a fast food restaurant or truck stop, but constantly eating junk food drains your energy. Take a nap. 
Before you hit the road, consider taking a short 20-minute nap. Several studies have shown that a quick nap immediately increases alertness and gives a boost in cognitive performance. Stay hydrated. Water has many health benefits. One benefit is reducing the chance of being fatigued. Drinking a pint of cold water is a great way to refresh yourself and stay more alert. Listen to upbeat music. Listening to upbeat music will have you tapping your foot, singing along, and staying alert in no time. Avoid listening to relaxing music or audiobooks. Those tend to make drivers more relaxed and sleepy. Truckers have a very demanding job. In order to deal with the stress and demands, it's very important to get the right amount of sleep. Hopefully these five tips will help you stay awake while driving. You're listening to TNCRadio.live. Remember to tune in to the Truckers Network Show with Shelly Johnson. Weekdays at 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern. <coughs> Welcome back to the Truckers Network Radio Show here on TNCRadio.live. I'm Shelly Johnson, and I'm talking with Dr. Julie Gatza of the Florida Wellness Institute. We're discussing food safety, food at barbecues, and all of that. Dr. Julie, uh, a lot of people like to avoid nitrates and hot dogs and stuff. What are maybe some better hot dogs to have? Uh, well, I'm from Chicago, so it's, uh, it's always the Vienna beef, but <laughs> I don't think those are nitrite free myself. Um, however, uh, joking aside, I think that, um, the, uh, the, uh, Hebrew Franks are probably a better hot dog. I'm sure there's some organic hot dogs out there as well. And vegan hot dogs that, you know, the vegans want to eat, but you know, the Jewish community is very, um, kicky about, uh, you know, what type of um, meat goes into their food and very special preparations on it. So, you know, in general, they're going to be a healthier um, hot dog than just throwing all sorts of weird body parts into a thing and, and, um, and not really giving you the data of what the heck is in it. Sure. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we really don't want to know what's in hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, I certainly uh, don't. Not in the Vienna beef one. Right. <laughs> I love them. It tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> Where do people reach you and get more information? And um, I'm sure you can help people remotely. So, I mean, this is this is terrific. Yeah, I certainly can. Um, they can uh, get onto the website, which is naturesources.com. They can read about the uh, Absorbate and what we were talking about today. And um, they can always contact the company and ask um, if they if you know, they would like my advice on something and, you know, get a hold of them that way. They're, you know, I'm more than happy to help somebody that needs that. Um, and the other thing you can call is the 1-800 number, which um, if you use the code radio, you can get some free absorbate samples or you can get 20% off your first order. And that phone number is 1-800-827-7656. You know, all this information is so lovely and it's so great to get smarter, but it doesn't help you unless you do something about it. So do educate yourself on, you know, get on that website and check it out. And, you know, if you can do one thing, get yourself a good digestive enzyme because at least once a day you're eating, if not three times, and you might as well get the most you can from each one of those meals. Absolutely. Well, it sounds like you get better nutrients with something like that and in it's it's so very important. It, it's just vital. And, you know, it's, it's such a weird secret that isn't talked about very often because, it, you know, it's just not, not a normal thing. Well, everyone knows what Tums does and everyone knows what Rolaid does, but, you know, why doesn't the normal household know that a high-quality digestive enzyme is it, it's better than taking the Tums for after you have the problem? Why not avoid having the problem in the first place and, you know, digest your food rather than trying to solve the symptoms afterwards? Amen to that. Thank you so much, Dr. Julie. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. You're always such a wealth of information. You've been listening to the Truckers Network Radio Show here on TNC Radio Live. Stay tuned for more coming up. Thank you for listening to another great interview on TNC Radio Live and the Truckers Network Radio Show. All of the material you hear on TNC Radio Live on our website, our broadcasts, or our podcasts are copyrighted. There can be no distribution without the express consent of TNC Radio Live and its partners. For inquiries, write us at info at TNC Radio Live.